Today's video is going to be all about the abs or your six pack and why you may not be seeing them, what their function is, how diet plays a role, genetics, and then finally ending with um, training efficiently so that you can reveal them if you so choose. So if those things interest you, just stay tuned. I hope you find a tip or two here that adds value into your life. And if you enjoy this video, it always means a lot when you drop the thumbs up and consider subscribing to join our family on here. I have lots of videos like this, with health, fitness, yoga, all that good stuff. But for today, we're gonna to be focusing on the abs. So let's start by going over the anatomy. So starting with the anatomy of the abdominals, I'll go ahead and insert a picture here. We actually have three distinct layers that comprise the muscles of our core. First, the most internal layer is the TVA, the transverse abdominals. Those muscles wrap around our spine and are responsible for the stability and our, our posture, keeping us upright and strong so that we don't just collapse every time we try to keep the body upright. Next, working our way out, we have the internal obliques, which in conjunction with the third layer, the external obliques, are responsible for a lot of our lateral flexion or rotation of the core. And our third layer, our most superficial layer, we have the external obliques um, and the rectus abdominis, which is responsible for that six pack look that a lot of people think of when they say, when you hear the word um, abdominals. And we wanna make sure we're not favoring any one of these layers because it could lead to things like imbalances or injury later on. And on that side of anatomy, every body has these three layers of abdominal muscles. You may not be able to see them as well as some other people, like some celebrities, but that's just due to a higher overall body fat percentage. And if you were to uh, reduce your body fat to a certain extent, you would be able to see your abdominals without having to train them. They're there. They do provide um, valuable functions for our body and for our movement day to day. Okay, that brings us to the question of why do you want to see your abs? Why did you click on this video? Is it because you think that they are a symbol of health and strength? Is it because you just like the way that they look? Is it because you think that they're going to get you the girl or guy that you like? Um, if any of those are true, are you ready to drastically alter your lifestyle and eating habits and whole social structure to get a six pack? If no, that's great and I would continue focusing on moving your body each day in a way that you enjoy, um, fueling your body with whole foods and just living your life because abs come and go and I don't think that they make you any better of a person. If, however, your answer to that question was yes, you are determined to get your six pack, then there are a few things that you can do and that's what I'm going to be laying out in the rest of this video. So first, talking a little bit about diet. Um, I am not a doctor nor a dietitian, so there are a few things here that I want to give disclaimers for. If you are a person that is overweight, I would recommend speaking to either a doctor or a dietitian to develop a meal plan that is based on whole foods that you can comfortably sustain for a long period of time that will gradually bring your body weight, your body fat percentage down. The second thing is maybe try experimenting with intermittent fasting that has been tied to increasing insulin sensitivity, which is great for people that are overweight or maybe pre-diabetic, and um, has also been shown to, again, decrease overall body fat percentage. And the third point is on your diet. So what your macronutrient profile looks like. And by that, I mean three macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fat, which I don't think is much of a surprise to most people. But what may be a little bit interesting is that each of these macronutrients is processed by the body a little bit differently. So starting first with protein, there's something known as the thermic effect of food, which uh, makes a part of the metabolic equation, TDEE, which I'll get into in a little bit. But our thermic effect of food, so what we eat, uh, consumes calories just to be processed and assimilated and then used by the body. So starting with protein, protein actually takes about 20 to 30% of its calories just in digestion. So that means that if you eat something that's 100 calories, if you eat, for example, 100 calories worth of chicken breast, you're only going to get 70 of those calories, between 70 and 80 of those calories actually used by the body because it takes 20 to 30% of the calories to be broken down and assimilated, as I mentioned, into the body. 
Next up is carbohydrates with between five and 10% being used by digestion. And lastly is fat, which is between zero and 3%. So almost all of it goes into your body. Now, jumping back quickly to protein. Protein is an essential part in maintaining healthy and lean muscle mass. And as I mentioned before, in anatomy, our abdominals are a muscle. So it's really important that as you're looking to healthily decrease your body fat percentage to reveal your six pack, that you are prioritizing that lean muscle mass because protein one in consumption is very taxing for the body. As we mentioned, 20 to 30% of it is just expended in the digestive process but also because it will play a role in keeping your BMR, your basal metabolic rate high, which means that your metabolism, a large part of your metabolism stays high and you can stay lean over time. One quick side note here, I'm not trying to demonize carbohydrates at all. I, I think that they're wonderful and they are fuel and they are also a part of a well-balanced diet. It's just that which carbohydrates you consume can also have an effect on where your body stores fat. So. On my channel, I always try to promote a whole foods approach and a holistic approach. So I don't count calories and I don't restrict any foods personally. Now that not, may not be what works for you, but I think my philosophy is that anything that comes from the earth is good. So have a whole spectrum of fruits and vegetables available to you and all of the animal products if you choose to eat animal products. Um, it's just that being a little bit more selective when it comes to refined or processed carbohydrates may be a good option because a diet high in refined carbohydrates has been linked to higher fat stores of visceral fat around the belly and around the in, in organs, which can be very dangerous. So choosing your carbohydrates from a whole food source is a much better option when you have it. And then saving those refined carbohydrates for a smaller portion of your diet because they may not be the best for your body and they may also uh, make you feel a little bit icky. So that's my last one on diet. Let's get into the next section, which is uh, body recomposition. Okay, this is where body recomposition comes in. And this is very exciting because this is a concept that I think goes against a lot of the traditional myths we hold in the health and fitness space. And I wanna start off by saying that fat does not equal weight. So when you see your number on the scale, doesn't mean that all of that is fat and that if you decrease that number that you're only going to be targeting the fat mass in your body and all of a sudden you'll be much leaner, your six pack will be out. No, 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 no. The body is, is a very complex and, and beautifully intricate machine and there's a lot of nuance to it. So focusing back on body recomposition, this is a concept that says that you can gain lean muscle mass and lose fat at the same time and your body can look the number on the scale may be higher, but your body can look completely different. And this has actually happened to me personally. Um, I started lifting weights consistently about five years ago. I haven't weighed myself in a very long time, um, but I do believe that I'm heavier or just about the same weight, but my body looks completely different and I feel stronger, I'm faster, um, I'm, I feel I can eat whatever I want and it's it's a very freeing place to be so that's another recommendation for you all is please don't worry about the scale actually throw it out it's an antiquated way of of measuring yourself and just getting too caught up on the number I think that a much better measurement for that is to see your body fat percentage um, but that's for another video I just don't think it's it's worth fixating on the number that you see each morning when you weigh yourself. That's just no bueno for the, for the mental health. So diving into body recomposition, there are a few processes in our body that go on when we're trying to gain lean muscle mass and lose fat at the same time. And one thing I wanna highlight here is the metabolic equation, also known as TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure, which is all of the processes that can go into making up your metabolism. What actually goes into you burning what you burn and why do some people have an easy time keeping the weight off, vice versa. So this equation is formed with uh, four different components. We talked a little bit about one of them, which is TEF, thermic effect of food, and also depending on the macronutrient can be higher or lower. The second of four parts of the TDEE is your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, also known as um, REE, resting energy expenditure, which is all of the calories that your body burns, the energy that your body burns 
doing nothing. So just what your body needs, the calorie input your body needs to survive. Because there are a lot of processes going on inside of us that require energy um, without us having to do anything, which is very cool. So this is the one that I want to focus on when we talk about getting our abs, is increasing your BMR so that you're burning more without even having to do anything. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Like just to burn more without trying, right? I mean, that sounds wonderful. Uh, hint, it actually has to do with lean muscle mass. The third of the four factors in our TDEE equation is NEAT, which is the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this is how many calories or what energy that your body uses in non-exercise activities. So, you know, walking to work, mowing the lawn, emptying the grocery bags, all of that stuff that's not deliberate exercise is your NEAT. And lastly, you have your T, your thermic, um, effect of activity. So what your body burns when you're actually trying to work out. So if you're doing a sport or if you like to weight lift or if you are golfing, you know, whatever it is that you like to practice, that specific time window will be how many calories are burned for your TEA equation. And the last part of this video is what you can do training wise to have the best chance of revealing your six pack. Going off of the idea in the previous point of body recomposition, we want to train in a way that will encourage increase in lean muscle mass while also losing fat so that we can show the definition of the muscles that we are working so hard to gain. So for this, my friends, resistance training will be your new best friend. It doesn't have to necessarily be with weight, but finding a way to incorporate resistance into your training will be key for sculpting those beautiful muscles and revealing your six pack. And the cool thing is that there are so many ways to incorporate resistance into your training. So option one, my preferred way, use weights. <laughs> Whether it's proper weights like a dumbbell or a kettlebell, or as I'm sure you've seen all the rage now during the quarantine home workouts, get anything that's heavy and pick it up and put it down. I lift things up and put them down also use resistance bands. I have a whole video here on my channel of different exercises that you can do with long loop resistance bands. You can include more time under tension, which is just getting more time in the position that's most difficult of the exercise. This can be done even with bodyweight exercises. And so of course I'm a little bit biased here because the workouts that I do and that I program for my clients and that I've shown here on YouTube are training with weights and in a full body manner. So you're working multiple joints at a time in a way that the body is designed to move so that you can build a strong, balanced, and, and healthy physique. And what's nice about these full body workouts, the ones that I show here on my channel and over on Instagram, is that they're training the core just by design. So why incorporating moves that are either asymmetrical or unilateral, you're working to stabilize the body and the core has to work extra hard so that you don't fall over. But if you are already training in a way that is well balanced and that you most importantly enjoy and can stick with for a long period of time, then you can add in some supplemental ab work to really hone those muscles and to make them more pronounced. So I have a few ab workouts here on the channel that I'll link to in the description box. And also some of the Nowly videos because that's a one really good way to train the TVA, the transverse abdominals. Looks a little bit weird, but also helps with your morning poop. So I'll link to those down below. So just to wrap up all that I've said so far in this video, the first is your diet. Prioritizing a diet rich in healthy and whole foods that you can fuel your body and feel your best. The second is prioritizing weight training or resistance trainings so that you can increase your lean muscle mass stores and increase your basal metabolic rate so that as we said, you can burn calories and burn energy without even doing anything. And the third and perhaps the most important is that having visible abs doesn't make you a better person. So please don't see that as any indication of someone's health. It just shows discipline and sacrifice in other areas of their life that is admirable in one respect, but is not necessarily worth giving up all of life's pleasures and uh, all of the cake that you would have to <laughs> sacrifice or forego to have a six pack. So thank you all so much for joining. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you picked up a helpful tip or two. And if you did, consider subscribing because I upload new videos every Sunday and I have lots more videos like this on here. And if this video hits 100 likes, 
I will make a guided ab slash core workout that you can do to get a little bit more ab training into your already, I'm sure, very well balanced training routine. So with that, I'm wishing you guys a beautiful rest of your day. Take care and I'll see you all here in my next video. Ciao.